Perfect. Sorry, Mr. Grayson. I can't climb above this turbulence. We're gonna have to live with it a while. Preliminary report, Columbus PD. Victims, Mr. and Mrs. Lonnie Naughton. Caucasian, both 34, white collar professionals. Force entry through sliding glass door in the back of the house. No apparent burglary or vandalism. Time of the attack, put it between 1 a.m. and 5 a.m. this morning. The victims' bodies? Not found. We can assume by the amount of blood that they're both dead. Uh, Dad, how can you eat when it's like this? I spent 10 years in squad cars. Convective air current turbulence is normal unless wind gusts surpass 40 feet per second, in which case... Alan, it... please, don't explain. Please, and victimology. We have victims of choice, working couples, upper-middle-class professionals. Last night was the first night there was a child in the home, suggesting a miscalculation on the part of the unsub or a growing need to take chances. Uh, did, did the child see the parents get attacked? They're not getting much from the child. They believe he slept through it. You guys move fast. Detective Burns, just make it bob. What's Grayson? Don't worry about the mess outside. No one's been in the house except the neighbor who made the call. We appreciate your cooperation. Which neighbor made the call? Uh, Compton's right next door. A boy woke him up at 6.45 or so, and they called us. Where's the boy? Uh, still with him. Child services needs a couple of days to locate Mrs. Norton's sister. She's out of state. Did you talk to the boy? Well, I can't get a thing out of him. Maybe he'll have better luck. Maybe. There's a lot of blood in there. I've seen blood. Yes, ma'am. Family room on ground floor appears to be undisturbed. More smudge marks through the existing prints. Same as the banister in the kid's door upstairs. The unsub wore gloves, so all of the prints that we get will come from the family. What do you think, latex? Probably. Surgical, something close to the skin. But not a dishwashing glove. Bodies were carried through the backyard, probably. Plenty of covering, no chance anyone could see. When he got to the alley, there's a street light, so he busted it. Raw, pea shooter, I don't know. A lot of gravel back there. Neighbor across the alley said the street light was fine a couple days ago. So the unsub may have been back there the night before last, too. I think I'll come back tonight and see if anyone saw a vehicle. High arced arterial spray extending up the wall indicates lethal severing. Tried to get up, loss of consciousness, death. Lamp disturbed on nightstand, left side of bed indicates a struggle. Fashion magazine on nightstand. Left side was probably wife's. Means husband was killed first. Norma, Alan. Notice anything strange right off the bat? Cleanest kid sink I've ever seen. Water hasn't been shut off completely. Let's get a cyclops in here. The unsub may have washed his hands. Jimmy! Have Burns send a guy to the car. Tell him to bring back the W13. Don't expose it anything, and bring it back in the case to the door. Got it. The slashing is psychosexual. Work up pre and post offenses. 
I uh, think I read about the W-13, uh, real state-of-the-art item, as I recall. Uh, so what are you using it for? I think they're trying to determine whether the unsub's a secretor or not. Uh, uh, a secretor secretes blood groupings into the body fluids. You get your blood type that way. Be careful with it, Frank. Don't jostle it. It's very sophisticated. Something to clean the mirror and the bowl. He's hiding something. I think he watched him sleep for a while. To what end? Was he angry with him, or did he want to protect him? Maybe he's protective. Maybe he just couldn't make up his mind. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. No, it's OK, Jim. But he was here thinking about it. The kid, the parents, what he wanted. Where's the kid now? He's with the neighbors. I want to talk to him. I'd rather you talk to the neighbors. Let Jimmy talk to the neighbors. The boy was asleep, Tony. He said he was asleep. He's scared. He doesn't want to talk about it. Come on, Wes. Jimmy, you go with him. I don't want to gang up on the kid. You're not going to gang up on the kid. You're going to let him hear everything you have to say. I want him to hear the questions, too, and the answers from the people he knows. I want him to come to us. So then you didn't hear anything unusual? Well, I'm a pretty light sleeper. But even when Ted and Diana had friends over, not a party or anything, we, you couldn't hear anything. They ever have parties, sort of open house style, where people they didn't know might show up? Never. Entertain family, friends? Not very often. They both worked such long hours and didn't have any real family here. His, his work brought them to Columbus. Uh-huh. Yeah, and you would pick Jeffrey up at the daycare center sometimes? At least one night a week, sometimes more. Whenever they couldn't get away from a meeting or if one of them was out of town on business, we'd feed Jeff. He'd watch a little TV in the den with Edison and fall asleep right there on the floor. Hey. Hey, Jeffrey, how you doing? What are you coloring? Huh? Can I see? What are you doing, Jeffrey? Are you drawing Edison a picture? What are you coloring me there, Jeff? <laughs> Dolby. That's one of his fish. Oh, yeah. Oh, I saw those. He's got beautiful fish. I, I couldn't take my eyes off him. Wish I had a collection like that, Jeff. Oh, yeah, Dolby, right. Yeah, I remember with the, with the red stripe around the belly. Yeah, he was one of my favorites. That's, uh, that's Digger there. What, cause what, he, he probably digs in the gravel, huh? <laughs> he's, he's pretty crazy about his fish. You know, I heard that there is an aquarium in the park, you know, where they have these huge, gigantic fish from all over the world. And Tony and I were thinking of going there tomorrow. You want to come with us? My dad's going to take me. Steakouts. How could you stand it? It's the unexpected that keeps it interesting. Nick Gravetti and me was uh, loaned out one time, one Saturday night, to Jersey Narcotics, uh, 60, 61. That's important in the story. Mm. I'll try and keep track. We're sitting on this guy, you know, in about an hour. And then we see he passes his package to another guy. So we follow the package onto the 110. So we, we, we tail him into this club, 
just off the turnpike. Mm, 110 Jersey Turnpike. Turnpike's not important. We get inside this club, and this spotlight hits us right in the face. My eyes adjust, and I'm looking down this long, winding staircase onto this dance club full of men. Yeah, so it was a gay bar. Well, you weren't gay in 61. You were light in your shoes. So the only way we can get in and find the guy is to dance through the crowd. You and Gravetti. <laughs> <laughs> so we foxtrotted our way across the floor, got this guy off the side, started patting him down. <laughs> But then we noticed the line forming behind him. <laughs> Nick Gravetti. Hell of a dancer. Let's check this place out. If you're the unsub, what are you thinking? I came back here. I walk around back here to get familiar. I look around, look at the other houses. The lights are on. They bother me. Maybe I sit for a while. I want to know this place. I want to think about it. The whole neighborhood's asleep. Nobody knows I'm here. I'm not a gum chewer. You chew when you play racquetball? Only if I want to swallow my tongue, Ned. Why? Then I would take my gum out before I went inside. If it's yours, move it. Deliver the Times Dispatch, huh? When I can get through. You know, there's a car parked back here the other night. Maybe blow your horn like you did just now. Nobody to blow the horn at. Jerk just left the station wagon sitting right there. Station wagon, huh? New or old? Don't there any dings or anything? Out of state plates? No, Ohio tags. This baby was right out of the box. Kind of dark colored. Blue, I think. Anything else jogs your memory, I'd appreciate you giving me a call. Thanks, sweet cheeks. Do the kids use the outside play area very much? In good weather. Uh, you ever notice some um, cars parked along the sidewalk, just uh, kind of watching things? We keep a pretty close lookout for things like that. We might be looking for a station wagon. New, dark blue. Not to my knowledge, but I'll ask around. That'd be good. Anyone but the Comptons ever pick Jeff up after school, another neighbor, co-worker? Jeff's parents have him down as an emergency contact number should Jeffrey need medical attention and neither one can be reached. Have you noticed any change in Jeff over the last 48 hours? Well, he's pulled in a little. He isn't playing with the other kids. He's usually much more outgoing. Any specific behavioral problems of aggressiveness, maybe screamed at or hit another child? No, nothing like that. Although this morning, he told one of the other instructors that he spilled his milk. We had to change his underpants. He'd wet himself. Um, can I talk to Jeff for a second? Come on, Ann. I mean, don't you think the kid's been through enough? Jimmy, that's the point. I don't think we know what he's been through. I might be out of line here, but to put this kid through an examination after all of this... He's withdrawn. He's exhibiting signs of post -trauma. He's quiet because he's scared. Jimmy, there are discreet ways of handling No, this. no, there are no discreet ways to make a kid relive this. Please, Anne, can we just be sure before we put him through an examination? That's why he should see his doctor, so we can be sure he can handle our questions. Just sit right down over here. That's it. Jeff. Bonnie's been showing us pictures and stuff that you drew. Can I ask you a question? You been taking care of your fish? 
Jeff? Because, uh, you know, you don't want to neglect them, right? I'll tell you what. Would it be okay if I went and fed them? Well, you want to come with? I have to go now. Oh, don't make me go by myself, because, I mean, you know me, you know, I might put in too much food and then make them sick. Okay. Okay, you go play with your friends, and uh, I'll go feed the fish. And maybe tomorrow you come with me? The blood type from the trap in the boys' bathroom matches the saliva found in the chewing gum. The same guy who chewed the gum found in the backyard also washed off in the sink. And the victims aren't A? No, neither is Jeff. Well, maybe cutting himself is part of the unsub's ritual. Only if his ritual involves nosebleeds. There's mucus mixed in with the A sample from the drain trap. Well, that could be from the cleaning lady. No, forget the cleaning lady. We did a complete analysis and isolated the male chromosome XYY. The extra Y is exclusive to males with a propensity for excessive violence. Which is associated with high blood pressure. Which is known to cause nosebleeds. Jimmy, turn it off. I want it off. I want it dark. I'm going upstairs to feed the goldfish. Why are you whispering? I don't know. <laughs> I've never been in this house before. A lot of nice things. Expensive things. Stereo. Furniture. I knew they lived like this. The door's open. I want to look inside. Whose room is it? I want to look at the boy. I want to watch him sleep. What do I want to watch? It's the parents I want. Uh, D Tony? What do I want from the boy? Oh, no, man. Um, look, you probably don't want me here, right? It's the parents I want. I want them out of here, Jimmy. I want to take them with me. I, I want couples, one of each, so I can do whatever I want with them. Oh, uh, well, uh, then let me go wait in the car, all right? I'll, I'll catch a cab. Makes me angry. The way these people live. I want to live like this. I could have nice things, but people won't let me. Every time I try and lift myself up, someone stops me. Someone says no. I'm no good. I'm not as good as you. I'm not good enough. Well, I am good enough. I'm better than good enough. I can have everything I want, anyone I want. I can have you. Sit down, why don't you? My wife just made some popcorn. It's just me and the boy now. start this thing. Where's Jimmy? He's with a boy. Tony and Ann want me to send Jimmy back to D.C. They feel he's in the way. Look, we all know the danger of being emotionally involved in a case. All of us feel badly for the child. No one wants Jeff to go through something unnecessarily. All right, but I just can't think this kid slept through the whole thing, Westy. I can't believe this guy let him. You want to examine the boy? That's what we have to decide. Look, 
part of me thinks the motive is psychosexual. Part of me agrees with Tony. The guy is pure anger. The aspirin wrapper the gum was in comes from one of those first aid kits found in a factory or an employee break room. He was probably bounced from job to job, fired by his victims, successful people. In which case, a psychological and physical examination will help clarify. I understand that. We're talking about two completely different types here, Wes, and until we find out which one to pursue, this case grinds to a halt. Look, Jimmy is not coming from left field on this one. He makes a good point. Jeff does not need to be poked and prodded in some cold, sterile environment. He needs warmth and understanding. Wes, if I thought for one minute that I was being cold and heartless, I'd send myself back to D.C. But the shorthand is still concerned for the boy, his physical and mental health. So, what you want is a full medical examination. Yeah, a full physical and psychological workup. And it doesn't have to be impersonal. It could be with his regular physician. Wes, it's part of a thorough investigation. <laughs> We're talking about a little boy here, not just a piece of evidence. This kid has gone through the kind of trauma that anyone in this room could only imagine. My son. Now, maybe I'm projecting here. But every time I, I see this kid, I think of my own son. And I ask myself, could I put this kid through even more agony? Look, uh, Jimmy gets on my nerves sometimes, too. But I wouldn't say he gets in my way. If you do this exam, I think sending Jimmy back to Washington would be a big mistake. Good night. Jeff's well-being, Wes. You yes, sure? I just think it's very important. The unsub is incredibly angry. He wants a life like the one he's taking from people. And with each new house, he's getting bolder, taking more chances. Four times now, he's gone in, killed them, taken the bodies. It doesn't even matter now there's not a child in the house. I think he wants a child in the house. I think that's the point now. He means to take this much further. I'm trying to convince myself that there are two ways of looking at this. Damn it, there aren't. Order the examination. But I'm going to leave it up to Jimmy whether he goes back to DC or not. Except for a few awkward questions, it'll be like any other visit to his doctor. I promise. And the poor kid, he doesn't even have any place to go. The Comptons are very nice people. They can provide Jeff with a loving home. And they should be able to adopt without too much trouble. They're not family, Anne. Well, he's never going to get that from Mr. Naughton's sister. All right, with her in detox, she's in no condition to deal with a six-year-old. Aaron, stop drawing on Dr. Radford's coffee table. Dr. Lester to OR3. Dr. Lester to OR3. It's fine. No indication of trauma whatsoever. Thank you, Doctor. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Radford. Thank you. Good luck with the adoption. And if you have any trouble, you don't hesitate to call me, okay? Bye-bye. Hey, Aaron. Remember me? What you drawing there, kiddo? I don't like crayons. Kids, if it doesn't plug in, it must not be any fun. Where's Dr. Chelsea? Oh, they changed the rotation. Hospitals have a way of doing that. Boy, I sure do like your drawing, Aaron. You want to sign it for me so I can hang it up? He hasn't learned to write his name yet. Here. Let me show you how. A. A. R. O. N. Now you try. Yeah, honey, my report. We tried to teach him once. He didn't seem to be interested. We didn't feel we should push. Come on, sweetie. Let's go in with the doctor. Tommy's got to get back. How are you and Mr. Baldwin doing? Weren't you trying to have another one? Oh, trying, yes. But between his traveling and my deadlines, the window of opportunity doesn't seem to be open for very long. <laughs> Aaron might not get that little brother. I want one. I want a lot of things, honey. Come on. Just a sec. There was no sign of trauma, so obviously we're going to have to make some changes in the profile. Obviously. 
And wouldn't this guy be real organized, not just in the attacks, but also in the burial? There's still some psychodynamics that don't add up, but yeah, he might even have some sort of ceremony for the dead. Detective Burns, his voice, turn off anything on the body? Nothing. All right, you two get back here. We have some rethinking to do. Uh, hold on. Skipper? Jimmy. You must be relieved, huh? Oh, that ain't the half of it. You coming in? Well, actually, I, uh, I sort of half promised to take Jeff to the aquarium, if that's okay with you. You want my honest opinion? I, yeah, I know, I know. I'm getting too close, but... I see, I, it's a deal I made in order to get him to the doctors. All right. But after that, no more. Say goodbye. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> I meant to Jeff. Thanks, bye-bye. Funniest thing just happened. Funny by your standards or the rest of the world? I just had a nice little chat with young Jeffrey Norton. It seems the police think he might have seen something. Who is Jeffrey Norton? The little boy we helped the other night. Did he see something? Nope. <laughs> I actually spoke to the feds. Why do they think he saw something? Because they're lost, Robert. They're clutching at straws. You shouldn't have gone into his room. We shouldn't be entering homes where there are already children. No, no. That is the point. These molly-coddling, corporate, white-collar Joneses who just live to stay ahead of everyone else in the consumption of designer trinkets. Oh, they fawn over their children with everything except proper parenting. Here, honey, here's another little ninja turtle. Here's ten more cassettes for the video game. Here's anything you want except my precious time. No, no, can't have that because I'm too busy imitating success as dictated by the trendiest magazines. My God, we've got to have the German sports coupe. we got to make an appearance at the racket club. we oh, sh come on, come on. These image obsessives are producing a generation of weak-willed, spineless adults. We'd stop them before having children. That's what we set out to do. Three times we did that. Those were training exercises, Robert. I stood in that bathroom and I listened for all I was worth. And do you know what I heard? Nothing. You heard nothing. Exactly. Nothing. And I knew then that your glorious skill should be practiced where it's infinitely more necessary. What's the point of any of this if we're not helping to produce strong adults? We freed Jeffrey. Now, he can find his own inner strength, grow up strong, independent, like we are. Now, that's so much more important than just seeing that they never exist in the first place. I don't want to get caught at this. <laughs> How can we be? Where's the evidence? Here, on the way to Pauper's Row. I hated the orphanage. I hated being fostered. I have a feeling I'm going to hate prison as much, and that's just where we're headed unless you get yourself under control. Excuse me? You have the nerve to whine about control? Who had enough control to get you out of that hellhole Mr. Rockford put you in? Francis. Huh? Huh? I did. I did. Robert. I got you through medical school. I did. Have I ever said no to you? Oh. It seems Mrs. Baldwin is trying to have another child. She uh, feels she didn't do an adequate enough job retarding young Aaron. She wants to try it again, get it right this time.
did you know that we've learned to talk to whales? It's true. See, it's with this special kind of language. It's like a special way to talk. You make these sounds in the water, all right? No, it doesn't sound like anything to you and me. But to these guys, it does. Why? Why what? Why do they have to talk? Well, they don't have to talk, but they want to talk, you see? And we want to listen. And that'll help each other understand uh, when we're happy or when we're sad, you know? Or when we hurt. I heard them. You heard them? Who'd you hear, Jeff? Both of the men in my house. Two men? Well, the unsub could have worked for his victims. Felt he got a raw deal. Well, guys, I got news for you. Between eight victims, they've held 26 positions at 14 companies. It's an awful lot of employee records to go through. Yeah. Tony, there were two of them. What are you talking about? Wait a minute, hold on. Go ahead. He just said he heard two male voices. What did they say? He heard laughter and something about setting them free. Did he see them? Well, he says he didn't. I believe him. Are you with him now? Yeah. Stay with him for now. Our unsubs may be worried that Jeff did more than hear them. All right, I'll check in later. We were hung up on one profile, but Ann and Tony were both right. That's why he keeps his rage in check. He's two different people. One gets off in the slashing, the other gets off on the power. I'm in love with potential. All those places for young minds to explore. It's chilling. Yeah, I'm remembering how Rockford used to make us read those idiot books from child services. Trying to place us in homes full of illiterates. Those overprotective morons. We've done all right. I'd say we've done a hell of a lot better than all right. Look at us. Look at our lives. Successful in our work, great lifestyle, women. And we did it all on our own. We didn't need parents. We weren't coddled and protected and retarded the way kids are today. We had to think of everything and fight for ourselves. Got us through medical school. The parents are really only good for one thing. Getting us here. And after that, baby, you're on your own. I'm getting the last of the files from the state child services. It's quite possible our unsubs are orphans. The unsubs idea of freedom was to get rid of the kid's parents. Now it makes perfect sense to me. The profile never came through because it wasn't particular in either personality. Two kids, scared, in and out of homes, probably made a secret pact together. It's the aberrant behavior of the third personality they've created together, a conditioning they would have gotten at an early age, particularly at an orphanage. Well, what do you think we're looking for? A couple kids who beat up on their adopted parents? Maybe, but it could be a lot more subtle. They're their own support group. They don't need approval or validation from anyone else. But I still can't figure out with that much anger why they identify with kids from normal families. They weren't identifying with the kids. They were trying to save them. From what? The uppies. Present company excluded. It's your decision. You don't have to leave. Yeah, I know. But uh, according to them, it's not my area of expertise. 
Man, it's getting kind of hard now. Did you say goodbye to Jeff? No. Thought I'd just let it go. He'll be all right. Kids are incredibly resilient. You did a good job. You're not anybody's way. Have a nice flight. Yeah, right. Jimmy, leave? Yep. Is he all right? He's gonna be fine. Wait a minute. Got a runaway. Six homes in three years. Returned twice for abusive threats. Finally released on his own at 16. Francis Radford. Dr. Francis Radford. That's Jeff Norton's pediatrician. That's right. I thought we run across reference in all the victim's doctors. The child wasn't the victim. And besides, Radford's name wouldn't show up. He's in rotation at the hospital with three other doctors. Where's phone? Here. And get me a list of all the families he's seen in the past two weeks. Yes, operator, would you put me through, please, to the Times Dispatch? Our suspects might try it again if it looks like we've left town. Well, Joan, it just sounds like a little inflammation, nothing to worry about. Is he coughing? A little, yes. I think it's the sore throat that's bothering him. You want to bring him in? Joan, is that a hard question? Are you all right? Uh, yes, I'm fine. I'm just, you know, awfully busy. Yeah, yeah, I know you are. So you don't think that sounds too bad? He's been looking forward to spending the night with his little friend all week. No. No, in fact, it sounds like a good idea. It gives you and your husband a chance for a little more privacy. The old window of opportunity, right? I'll tell you what. Why don't you just give Aaron some children's aspirin and his comfiest PJs? That's all he needs. I'll do that, doctor. Thank you. You okay? Mr. and Mrs. Baldwin will be driving you to a home in Cleveland. This is Agent Green, Agent Williams, will be assigned to you around the clock to ensure your safety and that of your sons. Understanding the difficulty of this time for you, we appreciate your cooperation. Stay awake. Right, good night. couldn't leave without saying goodbye. Thank you again for everything. Thank you, Mr. Bella. Oh, no, please. Jimmy. Uh, 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 uh. I'm thirsty. Ah, well, all right, sport. But then right back to bed, OK? It's very late. <laughs> Thank you very much for everything. Take a nap. I'll cover. Waiting around like this drives me nuts. A lot of things drive me nuts. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm fine. Well, would you mind terribly starting the car? It's getting late. They're adopting Jeff. They're a family now. Good luck with the adoption. Jeff won't be an orphan now. Good luck with the adoption. He knows that.
Don't move. Don't even flinch. You plan to use that? If I have to. <laughs> I'm not sleepy. Hiya, Jeff. Uh, Dr. Radford and his friend stopped by to see how you were doing. Isn't that right, Dr. Radford? Hey, Jeff. Jeff. Jeff, it's getting late. I should say goodnight to Dr. Radford. Jeffrey? What's going on here? Jeffrey? Mr. Thompson, everything is just fine. Why don't you take Jeff downstairs, get him a glass of milk, okay? He's having a tough time getting to sleep. This is not a problem. Yeah, 911. This is Detective James Bellow. station wagon parked in the alley in the back of the house. It's registered to Columbus Memorial. And there's two body bags in the back. Jeff's inside with his new family. I'm gonna get some sleep. Good night, Skipper. I says that the Comptons are now the legally adopted parents. The papers came through. Well, good. How's Jeff? Uh, he sounds better. Well, it sounds like he sounds better. Huh? Oh. oh. Mm -hmm. We should put that up somewhere, huh? Well, I was, I was kind of hoping to take it home. No, I think we should all enjoy it. Well, I don't, I don't have a place to hang it. You do now. Well, I... You can hang it in here and let us look at it from time to time. Jimmy, I automatically throw up a flag when I feel emotional involvement is getting in the way of the work. This time I was wrong. And I guess we're just so protective of our skills that um, sometimes we forget what you bring to the mix. Well, the truth is, Jimmy, if uh, it hadn't been for you and your connection with Jeff, we might not have caught those guys in time. We owe you an apology. Thanks. We'll talk about it later. Thank you.